So how are y'all doing today? I'm doing good. good. I'm how are good. you? Okay, I'm good. Thank you. So uh, before we jump into it, I want to start with some introductions, and I'll go first. My name is Jer. My pronouns are they, them. And I'm a full-time musician and content creator on social media. And I am also a former Wap Wilds employee. I started with the company as my first job 10 years ago, and I worked there for two years as a grill operator, master grill operator, and a server. I am Ben, I go by he, him, and I worked for 10 months as a server, door uh, core, and a cook in Shambly Dunwoody, Atlanta area. Hello, my name is Shay Parker, um, current in retail, former Waffle House employee of the course of 23 years, um, moved back home to Columbia, South Carolina, where I was at Unit 7428 for about six months. I go by she, her. I'm Cindy Smith. I go by she, her. I've been with Waffle House for 29 years. Um, I'm an elite certified diamond server, and I work in the Conyers area just outside of Atlanta. Hi, everyone. My name is Gerald Green. Um, I've worked at Waffle House for about seven years. Um, um, I go by he, him. Uh, I work at the Waffle House by, over there by Piedmont Avenue in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. And I'm a rock star grill operator and I'm in the Million Dollar Club. All right, so here at this table, there's a lot of experience spanning over half a century of various different positions in Waffle Houses across many states. And with all of these experiences, we're gonna talk about everything that we've gone through as Waffle House workers and answer the question of what is it like to work at Waffle House? Um, a lot of people don't understand the depths of what we go through as Waffle House workers. And after this conversation, people will start to understand why workers across the states of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia are fighting to unionize their workplace with demands like worker safety, demands like the end to the mandatory meal deduction policy, and uh, fight for a fair and livable wage. So in order to jump into that, we're going to start with an activity where I'm going to say a bunch of statements, and we're going to use these paddles, and y'all are going to agree or disagree. Okay. <laughs> First statement, Waffle House cares about my safety. All right. Waffle House pays me enough to cover my expenses. Okay. Waffle House has my best interests at heart. All right. Waffle House's mandatory meal deduction policy is fair and makes sense. I'm noticing a trend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have feared for my life while working at Waffle House. Okay, okay. I believe the solution to making Waffle House better is organizing my coworkers. All right. When workers come together, we can make structural change to improve our lives like higher pay, safer workplaces, and more. There's a lot uh, covered in those statements, and it seems to be uh, pretty unanimous that there is some sort of consistency in what we're all experiencing, regardless where we work, how long we've worked, and things like that. Is there any of those statements we want to talk a little bit about? Uh, I kind of want to talk about the bill deductions a little bit, mm -hmm. because like when you work at when you work at Wealth House, they take money out of every single person's check every single week, uh, regardless if you're a server or a cook, and that money can go to like you know making your life better, making your of uh, paying your rent, paying off car payment, or paying for your kid, uh, paying for your kids, like you know, giving mo uh, having money to like you know make your life individually better. But but instead, like Waffle House decides to take money out your paycheck for um like for food that you might not even eat. Yeah. Anybody else want to chime in? I would say that you know they take three to whatever dollars per shift. If you do a double, they're taking that money out per shift if you, you don't get a chance to eat. Give us the option to wanna, you know, eat Waffle House food or not. Um, you don't get to take the food home with you. If you're doing a double shift, it, it's ridiculous. And a lot of times you, you don't get a chance to eat or you might not wanna eat at that particular time or that particular item. So 
they definitely need to take it out. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously agreed. And I think this is kind of a good segue to go a little deeper into the topic of meal deductions, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot more to talk about there. And a lot of people who don't work at Waffle House kind of don't understand how that works. They might have an idea that we either get reduced meals if we choose to eat or we just eat free food. And we actually have a video prepared that is going to kind of dive into the perception of what people think the food situation for us workers are at Waffle House as far as eating. Okay. A great perk of working a fast food gig is the employee discount. And Waffle House's policy is extremely generous. How generous exactly? Well, how does free food sound? That's right, at Waffle House, workers can enjoy a wide array of menu items free of charge during their shifts. Freebies cover most of the breakfast menu, but workers don't have to limit themselves because plenty of lunch and dinner items count as well. And the options are equally appealing. Think salads, sandwiches, and even cheeseburgers. The only things employees have to pay for are special items such as desserts and meats like chicken and steak. Still, getting to smother and cover to your heart's desire and all in the restaurant's dime is a pretty sweet perk. Uh, that's bullcrap. <laughs> yeah, that, that statement with it's all on the Waffle House's dime is uh, baloney. Mm. Every day that I work, I, at $3.75 comes out my check for every shift that I work. When I work Christmas Day, I paid for food I never ate. I don't even drink the sodas. I bring my own cup, my own ice from home, and my own drinks in my car. I don't eat, in most cases, I don't hardly ever eat while I was maybe once a week. Why am I paying $15? That's ridiculous. Yeah, and it's kind of like what you said, um, Gerald, as well, about how, you know, if you work multiple shifts, you might not eat that food. Or like you just said, Cindy, you don't have the time to eat the food. Um, And it adds up and that stuff accumulates, you know, it's like you work five shifts a week or maybe even more like 10 shifts a week if you're pulling doubles or covering other shifts, then suddenly you're losing a significant amount of money. What kind of made me realize that was a thing after a year and a half of working at Waffle House was checking my pay stub and seeing that they took as of like August, almost a thousand dollars out of my pay. And I asked if I can get that to stop. And they said, that's just the way it is. People who work for this company for like 20, 30 years, that's a down payment for a house. Mm -hmm. You know, most Americans can't afford an emergency at all. You know, like Mm -hmm. most Americans don't have $500 set aside for any sort of emergency for whether it's a car or medical, anything like that. Has anyone had any experiences with emergencies that they couldn't cover yes. and it would have helped you want to elaborate on that oh yeah i do um as a matter of fact i uh you know i, my, I have a messed up back from doing so many years on them floors at the waffle house i have to see a pain doctor twice a month and i don't get a paycheck i got five paychecks last year and one this year because they claim that my health insurance premiums are behind i don't miss time from work i don't lay out i don't take days off. I work 40 plus hours every week. How in the world are my health insurance premiums high that you're taking my entire check? You took all five of my PTOs, four from last year and one from this year. You know, you're taking all this money from me, including all that food money on food we're not consuming, food that we're not allowed to take home. And if we do want to take it home, we're paying full price and the 20% to go. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't even pay to go to the doctor last month. I couldn't pay my copay. My copay is $30. That's sad. Mm-hmm. That $30 is probably about how much you lose in a week of working yeah. from the meal deductions. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, it's a very real way that it affects our lives every single day. Anybody else have anything they want to add in? I just want to say that, like, you know, I, I hurt my foot last year and um, I st- uh, again, like the, the insurance that Waffle House offers, like, you know, if you don't really like read the insurance policy that closely, then like you, you, you like the like if you get the middle plan, then that one isn't really um, that one doesn't really cover anything honestly. And like I haven't been, I haven't been able to go see a doctor for my foot this entire time. It's uh, like so that's why like I get it's really frustrating because like you know we have to we like uh, we get injured on the job at Waffle House and we can't really like afford to like take care of ourselves. And like, like that kind of goes back into like the middle deductions also because like you know they're taking money, uh, like they, they like they're taking money from like from us to for food that we have to uh, that we don't even eat. 
Uh, and we paying money for the health insurance also. I mean, like, you know, what money do we have left to like, you know, actually survive? Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and like the whole point to work is to be able to survive right. and be able to live our lives and pay for all of the other things that we have to do. And as if the wages weren't already low enough, now they're taking uh, money away from our pay in order to make that happen. You know, it's like they're taking 375, you said, out of mm -hmm. each each check. That's about an hour, two hours worth of work. And then my question to me is this money that they're taking out for us, where does it go? There was only one time, really, that I missed the mandatory meal because I put up with the food when I'm not enjoying it. Because if it's coming out of my paycheck, I'm going to eat it. And I could not eat the food that day. I called my manager. I'm like, hey, I had a medical reason why I couldn't eat the food. It's coming out of my paycheck. When can I come and get this food? My manager was like, you can't come get this food if you're going to come take that food. But I paid for it. Like the manager sometimes will treat it like it's a, a free meal, even though it is a credit. But that's my thing. It's a mandatory meal deduction. Right. Why on our check does it say meal credit? If we can't take it home, why does it say meal credit? That's not right. Yeah, because like a credit implies that it's something that can be redeemed or something that is owed, you know? Right. So they're not really giving us this food like they owe us that food. You know, if we only can eat it on a shift, we can't even take it home, which is unfair, you know, because we paid for it. That's honestly one of the reasons why they try and make you full price. If they don't, they're like, like I've heard many times, who are you going to give this food to? Why, why you can't? Why can't you eat it here? And it's like I'm not wanting to eat this food. It doesn't matter who I give it to if I'm paying for it. Any amount, exactly. subsidized, exactly. reduced, exactly right or not. Exactly. Right. And and my biggest thing is, you know, they're they're really coming down and hounding about. You know, <clears throat> I'm currently with Waffle House now. Um, they're coming down and hounding about food costs, food costs, food costs. It's mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. So your food costs in some stores, we are what they call a country store because we're outside the city limits. Our food cost is supposed to be like a 30.1 or a 30.2. Mm -hmm. You're fussing about food cost, food cost. Stop taking the meal deductions out. When we eat, let us put that money in the register. So therefore, your food cost is accounted for. It, it's showing that we're paying for that food. So therefore, if we don't eat, we don't have to pay. That would be the sensible, smart way to go, to have that option, not just to opt in or to opt out, but that's a third option. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, think, I think what it really is is that, like, you know, they don't really give us the ability to actually um, say what we want to do with the money that, like, you know, they say, oh, we're, um, we're uh, uh, oh, like, we're taking this money out of your paycheck because you're going to eat on the job. But, like, you know, we don't have that power to say like whether we want to give them that money or not, or like you know, or, like or do that third option like you said. Like you know, we don't. Uh, 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 it's really just like what corporate office wants to do, or what like upper management wants to do. Not it has nothing really to do with like you know. We don't have that ability to actually like say like no. What uh, uh, like if you got a food cost problem, help let us help you with the food cost problem by like taking like uh, uh, like it right. like um uh, in some way shape or form. But like you know, we don't have that ability. Exactly. Uh, so like when we're working these shifts, it's not even guaranteed that we have the time to eat. Um, does anyone want to speak about that? Um, you rarely get uh, time to eat, even though Waffle House um, is supposed to uh, allow you a 30 minute mandatory break. Um, you don't get a chance to eat. If you are busy, like if you fix a meal, you can fix you some grits or whatever. They're going to get cold by the time you go greet your table fix a coffee, get their drinks, which you're not supposed to do first, but a lot of times you have to. And then, like they said, they talk about the food cost. You wind up throwing hash browns away, grits add up. You got four servers that's eating grits, you know, and they don't get a chance to eat them. That's a pan of grits. By the time four or five people eat out of that pan, you got to throw it away. And it's ridiculous that we're not allowed to take food home. If we don't have a chance to eat, what does it matter if it goes home? If we're eating it, that should be all that matters. However, it's ridiculous that we're getting this amount taken. You can work a double. You work a 10-hour shift on third. Say you work first shift, and then you might have to do a, a split shift on second. 
You just never know. Mind not staying over on third. You just never know. So you got those three shifts regardless that's going to come out. And mm -hmm. it's sad that we're not allowed to do that. So it, whether they need to give you the option in, option out, or, you know, pay for what you want. So Waffle House definitely need to make some changes. Like, they're stuck in their ways and the things that they need to change, they're not. And that is definitely one taking out this middle deduction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think it's now a good time to kind of go into an activity for the meal deductions where we're actually going to have uh, two plates of food from Waffle House and we're going to compare uh, what we get for our meal deduction and what we don't get for our meal deduction because the meal deduction doesn't even cover all of the food that we can eat. There's still premium meats that they call them. Country ham, uh, steak, chicken, pork chops, cheesesteak. I believe that's all yeah. of them yes. that you have to pay extra for. And it could be anywhere from $2 for the chicken up until nine like nine for the T-bone. Yeah. Nine for the T-bone, yeah. So uh, yeah. we're gonna compare the two and see how much money we would be spending depending on what we eat at Waffle okay. House during our shift. All right, so we have an assortment of food right in front of us from Waffle House. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to give y'all's opinions on what you think when you see the food over here versus the food over here. Where's the protein? Right. There's no protein near me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this plate right over here, the only protein you have is eggs, which I'm assuming two eggs is not a supplementable amount of protein uh, for a day versus over here you have a steak, you have chicken, you have country ham, which are all high in protein. Right. Like that's the, uh, over there is the only thing that's covered by the meal deduction. Like you know, if you don't want to spend any money uh, on anything, like you on uh, you have you have you to get over there. But like over here, like the steak, uh, uh, you have to pay for a, the country ham, you have to pay for the t-bone, you have to pay for a chicken. Basically, like if you actually want like a full meal, you have to like a pay something. And well, actually, like you want to be you want any of this, you're paying something because like it's all taken out the meal deduction. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's very important to note that the free food isn't really free you're paying from right. your paycheck you're paying with your time being there regardless once you add the 375 to the cost right. of all this you're spending upwards to for most of the meats 10 11 12 dollars as much as you would be spending just full price at a lot of other you know restaurants that you can find commonly around so they're taking all this money out that can be incremental to our lives but is that really making a big difference for what we can eat and how much we're spending eating at our workplace? Well, you know, in my case, um, that's pretty much, if I do eat, that's it. Because the only breakfast meats they offer is bacon, sausage, ham, and a hamburger patty. I can't have pork. And pork is cooked all over that grill, so in most cases I have eggs and toast because them hash browns are where pork has been. They don't care if a customer comes in and wants them to clean the grill. They won't do it for a customer. If they have a pork allergy or they have some kind of allergies, they won't do it. They claim they did. Um, one of my unit managers put some ice cubes on the grill and scraped it and said, well, cook that over there. That did not clean it. It should have been broke down and grill bricked, scraped and seasoned, and then cooked on. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and even on top of that, at the store that I worked at, they used bacon to season the grill. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the grill is seasoned, by the time it's seasoned, there's pork on it already. If a customer comes in and, you know, you're supposed to clean that grill off for that customer, and they said that they're taking this money out, but you can't eat nothing. And then it's a discrepancy if they're going to clean the grill or not to accommodate people that don't eat pork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I worked there for two years and I started early 2014 and early 2015, I start I started transitioning to being vegan. It was March 2015 when I stopped eating meat and it just cut out most of what I could eat there. Right. And by the time I had left the job, I was pretty much fully vegan. So the only thing I could eat were the hash browns mm -hmm. or toast. Right. Well, yeah, you could buy your own bread, but you know, like in my situation, um, that little three people are like, oh, it's only three dollars. Yeah, well, that's only three dollars. I don't have to buy groceries. I go to hungry most nights because I can't afford to buy groceries. You know, if it wasn't for my youngest son's dad, we wouldn't have anywhere to live. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that bad. Like mm -hmm. I said, you know, I don't get a paycheck. 
I got five last year and one this year, and the one this year was only $12.59. How am I supposed to live on that? So I think we all could agree that regardless how you look at it, the meal deductions just is not sustainable. It's not fair. And it is more than a reasonable demand to demand the end of the meal deductions for all Waffle House workers. Yes. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Does anyone else want to talk anything about the limited meal options that we get as workers? Um, I'll, I'll speak on it. I mean, Waffle House makes billions of dollars. They have this million dollar club where cooks are making one to two, three million dollars, but they can't even eat, treat themselves to a T-bone, you know, mm -hmm. after they done made $2,100 on first shift or second shift or third shift. It doesn't matter. It's it's ridiculous that they make all this money and then that money just gets flipped back into the corporation. It's not going into our pockets. Like, I'm living in the hotel, you know, because mm -hmm. I could not make my ends meet. Living, you know, working at Waffle House and, you know, they put me in a bad position. So... What are y'all doing with this money? Like, why can't y'all invest in your workers instead of just reinvesting in yourselves mm -hmm. to make y'all more billions and billions of dollars? Yeah, and the reason why they have the billions in the first place is because of the workers, Definitely. you know? It's like, at the end of the day, people go to Waffle House to eat food, and who's making the food? Who's the serving the food? Because right. yeah. the a manager will come in and cook themselves a T-bone and go sit right in the office. They don't write no ticket, <laughs> so why we got to write a ticket for it? Yeah, not only that, not, not only that, it's just that, like, you know, like, I've been, like, in the $2,000, $3,000 rush on first shift before, like, and, like, you don't have, you, you, just, you just don't even really have free time to, like, even sit down and, like, eat any of that. Like, if you're working on, like, Saturday morning or, um, uh, you have people that are, like, strike on coming in from the club at the beginning of the shift, and then during, like, then during the shift, you got, like, people that just want something to eat on Saturday morning. And then towards the end, like you got lunch rush and everything like that. And that lunch rush lasts between like 12 to just straight up to like the to second shift. I worked at stores where like that, I, like, you know, you got to rush it when, when second shift walks in. And so like, when do you have the free time to actually like eat any of that food? Like mo most of this stuff up here takes uh, it takes a pretty good minute to actually get the, get cooked. So, and then like, if you hit, like then like, isn't like we've all been in a waffle house. It's not a lot. There's not a lot of free space. Like we, all, like most of us, most waffle houses don't like the back room is not really that big. Like, it's not really that big. You get, if we get it, if we get any time to like walk away from the um, walk away from the grill, we have to usually go outside. And wh where do you have like a place to sit down and eat? Like you just really don't. Yeah, and even going outside is sometimes not even guaranteed. All right, so we're gonna move on to talk a little bit about workplace violence. I think everyone, whether you're a Waffle House worker or not, is familiar with the tropes of Waffle House being kind of an inherently violent place to be, whether it's the the interviewing, asking if you know how to fight to work there is a common meme on the internet. Um, there's all of the videos that go viral of um, violence against the workers or just in Waffle House in general. And, um, just people think it's like fake, you know? I get asked a lot when people find out I'm a former Waffle House employee, they're like, is that really Work. what it's like working there? And I tell them there's nothing I've seen on the internet that I have not seen in real life at a Waffle House. So has anyone ever felt unsafe while working at a Waffle House? And oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would y'all like to talk about that? A lot of, a lot of times. Um, it seems like when I moved for different states and started at a Waffle House, um, transferring or whatever, the incidents escalate. It's a different type of violence. Um, yes, you can experience the fights. That's one level. Um, I've experienced a person in decent exposure running through, locking their self in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, the police pulling out tasers, you know, and their guns to get him out the building. I've also experienced um, being shot at on the inside of a Waffle House where the bullets actually came in, grazed a 16-year-old on her birthday eve, um, me hitting the floor, dislocating my shoulder, um, new phone broke. There was no regard from Waffle House um, during the process of me healing, after pro after me coming back to work, 
never heard from anybody. Nobody never reached out to me um, to see if I was okay. And I was actually in a sling like for some weeks because that's the most painful thing if anybody ever experienced that. Just for a bone to be snapped in place. Like I was in a lot of pain on top of being a diabetic. Mm -hmm. Um, So violence has different levels, you know, so. For me, that was like the worst experience. We aren't trained how to de-escalate these things. We don't have that training. We don't have that security f power just there to de-escalate things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I've had people that work at my Waffle House. Like, um, a lot of people have gotten fights at a different Waffle House that I worked at. A friend of mine, he had got shot and killed while um. Work I, I, while working third shift, him and a server were outside talk, I, I, talking to each other when someone walks up and um, I, I can, like, you know, start, start talking to them. And, like, while the, while the cook was sitting down, not really paying attention, they, like, he pulled a gun on them and shot him in the back. And Waffle House, they called me in the next day for morning shift. And I didn't even, like, and I didn't even know what was going on. Like, you know, everybody was, like, when I came inside, everybody was, like, really quiet and calm. And, like, you know, they were, like, really somber. And it wasn't until like we got in the back room and server asked me like I had heard what happened and I was like, no, what happened? And, and like, and she was like, oh, Jesse got shot and killed last night. We never heard anything from like Waffle House corporate office or anything like that. And we were open again the next day. Like it's 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 insane because like it, I'm like you have like all of that stuff on the internet where like you know you get the viral videos of people getting the fights and everything like that and. Um, uh, like, you know, the infamous one with the girl blocking the chair. And people think that, like, you can come in and, like, you know, do all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But, like, you know, we're just regular ass people, y'all. Like, people think that, like, you know, we can get, you can get in fights with us and, you know, or like, you, you, know, you can pull guns on us and everything. But, like, you know, like, just people die when they do that, when, when that happens. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like you said, we're regular people and we're people that have like loved ones, families, children. I was robbed at gunpoint in front of my now 18 year old son who was six at the time. The pistol was put in my face and I was told to open the register. I had tunnel vision. I didn't see anything but that pistol. My child witnessed that. That was what, 13 years ago. Um, I give the man the money. He left the building. We called 911. I tried to call my district manager, nobody answered. I tried to call my unit manager, nobody answered. I finally got I had to go to get a hold of my division, and he's like, well, try to call the manager. That was 13 years ago. That was very traumatic, not just for me, but for my son as well. He's a six-year-old child sitting here witness his, a pistol being put in his mother's face. In the blink of an eye, he could have lost his mother and witnessed it. To this day, Waffle House has never asked me, do you need psychological help? Is there anything we can do to help you? I've never received a phone call. I've never had anybody ask me, is there anything they could do to help me? Um, when people pull up in the parking lot and I go in early in the mornings and it's dark, dark, they'll pull up and park. I get scared. I start to get paranoid. I watch that car like a hog because you never know if they're going to come in with a gun and try to shoot you. It shouldn't be that way. I am in, I am scared for my life because if something happens to me, my kids don't have anybody. I'm all they got. Yeah. My life is worth more than what Waffle House has got in that building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they never checked in on you, and it's like kind of the same, like relating back to your story. Right. Like they'll call you in if they need you to work. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care about what we're going through, but they won't call you to see if you're okay after a traumatic event that was put into place because you were at the workplace. Uh, like, the thing about like what happened with uh, with Jesse is that like, you know, the people in the community who were mad, well, the fact the Waffle House was still open the next day, like everybody, well, I, people would constantly say things like, oh, why didn't y'all close the store? Like, like or anything like that. But like, uh, I mean, oh, um, was it uh, I, Waffle House, uh, I, Waffle House never closes, which when, like, especially I, like they really should have at that time. At this point, enough is enough. Enough is Our enough. lives are worth more than they could imagine, and they don't care. It's time to give them a wake-up call. Well, we aren't just modest in the building, as they often like to say. Mm -hmm. um, I've had management to say, you know, you can be replaced. Yeah, we can be replaced, but we're, we have lives. You know what I'm saying? 
you shouldn't have to fear going to work um, or, you know, fear for your life getting shot over uh, $3 hash browns or being kind-hearted, opening the door uh, opening the door for someone. However, you have this billion-dollar corporation that are losing more lives for and they come in, people coming to eat. It's a revolving door. You can put up these walk-up windows, but you can't pay your workers. You can put up these walk-up windows, but you can't add on a safe place for, you know, your workers to run. Y'all putting remodeling stores, but not taking the workers in consideration at all when throwing up store after store in different locations, cities, and states. So what is Waffle House going to do as far as security in every Waffle House on all shelves? It needs mm -hmm. to be done. There is no safe place in Waffle House. Mm -hmm. No safe place. The store that I worked at, the lock was broken. We couldn't lock the door. And we brought it up to our management multiple times because we would have situations where people would show up and mm -hmm. we would like ask them to leave and they were drunk, they were intoxicated and they wouldn't like go outside, but they they wouldn't leave and they would come back in and go back out. We couldn't lock the door. And in fact, one of our regional managers said, you don't need to lock the door, we don't close. I've been hit with a sugar shaker before and uh, this was in a South Carolina location, actually. You get those club crowds, you know, you get people that's intoxicated and a lot um, that I've seen um, with underage drinkers. And those are the ones, like, I've experienced people sneaking in alcohol. They'll drink while they're in there and then can't control themselves. Mm -hmm. But the... Security is a must, like being hit with sugar shakers, customers feel like they're entitled to pick up stuff that you have to clean up, throw it at you, you know, talk to you any kind of way. Um, it's really sad that, you know, grown folks too. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been thrown with anything? Yeah. I had a lady grab my apron and throw her scrambled eggs in my apron. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a little weird. I delivered the plate to the table. I sat it down. I said, do you need anything else? She said, yeah, you didn't do my eggs right. I said, well, you told me you want them scrambled. She said, no, I didn't. I told you scrambling them fry them well done. I said, I'm sorry, do you want me to take them back? She said, yeah, you can take them back. Dropped them <laughs> right in my apron off the plate. Jesus Christ. I've had plates of food thrown at me during a hurricane before. Like, um, there was a cut on, like, uh, during Hurricane Irma, I think it was. Um, mm -hmm. Like our store was the only store that was still open um, in all of town, and the manager had taken like this food to the customer, and they're like, "Y'all didn't take my, y'all didn't make my food right." And um, I can't remember exactly how it was wrong, but like, uh, and I was sitting there on the meat mm -hmm. grill because like it was just like it was just blowed up because like when, when you're the only Waffle House in town, then like everybody comes to that Waffle House. Mm -hmm. um, so I was sitting there on the meat grill, and I uh, like the manager was like. Um, I man was like, okay, well, I'll fix it for you. And she picked up the plate, and she, and the customer was like, you're taking food out of my baby's mouth. And she grabbed the plate and just threw it at, uh, uh, threw it at towards us at the grill. And wow. uh, uh, and like you know, and this and that's wild because like you know, like the restaurant was like just like you know, we had to line out the door, and like uh, uh, I mean, people, are, like, I guess people just don't understand that like. Hey, um, uh, we're busy. Um, uh, you ain't gotta be all that. You ain't gotta be all that extra. <laughs> um, but uh, I, at the end of the day, it's just it's just some um, uh, eggs and toast. We were the only Waffle House that was open at the town at the time. Why not? Like why weren't all of them shut down? Because like it was like it was like, it was a really big emergency situation. I mean, like it wasn't just it wasn't just all the other Waffle Houses. Literally, all the fast food places in uh, in town at the time were shut down. Oh yeah. And like you know, instead of like you know going going along with all the other fast food places, well, uh, they said like oh we're going to keep just this one open. And I was like the other the other three stores in town don't even have power. And you guys want to keep just our store open? It's, 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 like, like, it was crazy. Like, it's just like, what, what are we, like, why are we, why are we doing this? <laughs> so how do you all feel that it's such a violent uh, place to work at Waffle House and how normalized that is versus other chains or corporations? Well, when I started 29 years ago, <clears throat> everybody's like, you know, I've had people ask me, oh, does that really happen or is it all made up? I said, no, it really happens. I said, but what's sad is this is nothing new to us workers. Mm -hmm. This has been going on for years. Only reason why it's out there now 
is because of social media and everybody's got cameras and everybody's got their phones and they're recording it and they're uploading it. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't feel safe at my job. It's ridiculous. And like with the hurricanes, I've worked through a hurricane before. You know, it was horrible. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but FEMA bases their scale off of Waffle House. Mm -hmm. If there is a hurricane or what have you, say Miami, Miami store, the one closest to Miami is open, but Fort Lauderdale closes. Well, then, uh uh-oh, FEMA knows it's bad in Fort Lauderdale, Mm -hmm. but it's not so bad close to Miami. So they run off the scale of Waffle House. That shouldn't be that way. Mm-hmm. If there's a you know a, a severe storm, hurricane, tornadoes, we need to be at home with our families and make sure we're taking care of them and make sure they're protected. We don't need to be trying to serve waffles and eggs to people. Yeah. Y'all want that? Come down from corporate and do it. Let us do it, our families. <laughs> yeah. And I know we're talking a lot about violence being specifically person on person, wow. like like, but violence is more than that. Forcing workers to come in during a natural disaster is also violence. Being in South Florida, I worked at Waffle House when Hurricane Matthew, I believe, was coming through. Mm-hmm. And the, they blacked out the dates. When the hurricane was projected to go right over where Waffle House was, they told us we had to go into work. And if we called out, we were fired. Um, we had a snowstorm um, and I lights went out. And you would think that Waffle House shut down um, no, we have a gas grill, so we were told to open the door. And if we got any customers, we had a limited menu that we have to sit, you know, serve them and fix for them. But I think it's ridiculous because we're human. Mm-hmm. And they were at home with their families, you know, like you said. And then it's no regard, it's no care for the workers and their families. So that it, it really sucks that, you know, you have to experience stuff like that with Waffle House, with the job, you know, I know I love working for Waffle House. It's always been a job I could go back to, but corporate has no regard. And I know that a lot of them just wasn't handed the corporate position. They started from where we are and you would think that they would take in consideration and want to do better, but they not. And the violence is just only going to get worse because Waffle House is not safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of makes me like, I kind of didn't spend a lot of time thinking about like how violent Waffle House is and like how I, uh, the corporation itself doesn't really like make any um, like doesn't really try to push back against that violent culture that like it has online and or like, you know, how people expect it to be violent. I mean, like some of the most rewarding experiences I had with people uh, in my entire life has been at Waffle House where like, you know, you just like simply talk to only talk to people and you know, just have very like human interactions with somebody. Like, you know, you're going through it in the day and you have like, um, uh, people are stressed out about like their job, their, uh, or, or, or making, or making payments or they're stressed out about their kids. And, you know, like, you know, it really like, it really like hits me home all, all, like, all the time. And, but uh, like, instead of like, you know, focusing on any, on any of that stuff or like, you know, making sure that people are safe while they're, uh, while they're at Waffle House, like, uh, the on the company is instead like you know just more focused on like trying to sell food um to people that like you know want to have that want to like put us in danger uh, or like you know directly put us in danger and and not only that but, but like you know they don't really like fight against this culture uh, that they, they have like everywhere else where like you know people expect to go to Waffle House to see like <laughs> to see the violence uh, I back around when like the first time I started Waffle House when um I think it was actually Hurricane Matthew came through. They um, they asked me to go to the store to go like buy paper towels, uh, like to uh, because they ran out of paper towels in the store. So I had to go to the Hardee's that was up, uh, that was up the road, and like it was just what? pouring down. Yeah, I had, I had to walk to it actually. Um, uh, what? So it was just, it was pouring down, just drenched in rain. Like um, I had to like walk over there, and like it was wild because like the store itself didn't even have power. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, like, so I walked to the Hardee's, um, I got the paper towels, I came back and like, you know, I'm just drenched, soaked in rain and like, they asked me to get right back on the grill. That's crazy. Hmm. Yeah. One of the coworkers that I worked with in 2005 actually was flown out to work in uh, New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina because mm. they still had gas. So 
after one of the worst hurricanes in history, they kept that Waffle House open, and that store was making up to $15,000 a day mm -hmm. in profits off of running with no power for weeks, and they had them working, and everyone just worked 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., you just worked the 12-hour shift. And I was trying you know? to get up here. I remember that. And you, yeah, you worked every day, and it's like, it's wild to me that they can make so much profit mm -hmm. off of these natural disasters. Speaking of uh, violent workplaces and natural disasters, are we all familiar with the Waffle House uh, crisis management training? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? When they started it. Okay. Yeah, so allegedly it's always been a thing. Um, oh, okay. And every Waffle House employee is supposed to be trained in how to uh, get through crises, whether it's de-escalation, whether it's if there's some sort of any incident or crisis going on, whether it's from natural disasters, uh, storms, anything like that, we're supposed to have training um, already uh, prepared for us or we've already went through it as part of our training to be on the floor, which me personally, I applied, I had an interview, they said they'll call back in uh, five days or you know five business days and then they call me back an hour later and ask if I could come in that day because five people quit that day, so right that's after. So real thing. So I was thrown on the floor wow. serving. For, that was my first job. I was just thrown on the floor serving. I had no training. So, wow. and then they never bothered to train me because I was I apparently knew how to serve. <laughs> so, um, okay. has anyone else experienced any sort of training that Christ. helped them de-escalate crises? No. No. no, no. I didn't know that was a real thing. I, me either. I've been at Waffle. I've been Waffle for seven years. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, that's okay. I've been with a company 29 oh, years, and I'm just as clueless as everybody else. I actually uh, asked uh, some of my coworkers and even the manager, like, in the Shamley Dunwoody location, we had our last tornado 20 years ago, and it was bad. It came right through. And I asked, like, because these things tend to come this far east on a cycle, I'm like, what's our plan if a tornado comes through? Like, do we go in the bathrooms? Do we go in the back room? Like... We, don't, we got all this glass, it's gonna fly around out here. We can't be out here if there's a tornado coming through. What do we do? I never got a what set in stone answer. We don't have an actual plan. We only got like, we, we, we were all like, okay, so I think this is the best thing to do, but I'm not right. sure. There's no plan. Um, there's no safe space in Waffle House. What are we gonna do? Hide up under the register? Um, that's weird to me, but I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's very strange. You know, I mean, like I said, I've been with the company 29 years, and in the back room, they have how you de-escalate on a poster back there, how you de-escalate, how you're supposed to de-escalate a situation with a customer who's not happy. It doesn't say anything about somebody swinging on you, shooting at you. You know, it does, there's the crisis management have no clue. Um, I mean, like I remember that there used to be a test that you had to take, but like when like, before you need to get like red star or blue star. But like I don't remember like you know I don't remember any crisis management training. And also they don't they don't got rid of that test. So like when pe like just training in general has like gone like gone down over the years. That like what like especially since like twenty twenty when like you know they just kind of just throw people out there nowadays. And like but back when I first started like you know. There used to be like you know an actual test. I just think that like you know like things have just gotten progressively worse over the years. That now they just simply like oh um, you know how to cook or you know how to like write a ticket or something like that. Well, let me get, get out there. <laughs> yeah, um, and I think it's just clear like no matter what, uh, there's just a lot of issues with workplace violence and lack of safety in the workplace from natural disasters to crisis with other people and we're not equipped to do that and even if we were equipped to handle all of this that's a lot of task delegation for one employee we already have to do a lot more other restaurants don't require their servers to bust their tables or wash their dishes mm -hmm. so now you want us to also be ready to handle a crisis like at that point it's like we're just that to me that just sounds like a manager <laughs> you know right, like you're exactly. you're like one step away from being a manager <laughs> at that point with all the tasks that you're handling Here you and mm -hmm. yeah i think that the demand of having security at the workplace and having things in place to make sure our workplace is a lot more safe is nowhere near a uh, ridiculous ask from a uh, demand of the workers 
And uh, you said something about uh, the no, other places don't require their servers to bust the tables. When you're working as a uh, door core, which I did for a while, I was sent off to a couple other stores as well. And they will enforce the door core not to bust the tables for the servers. And like, even though they're telling the door core person, you got to get the, if you got, if you need a table, you get that table no matter what you do, except all these things. And I was, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, I was told, like, I had at the store I was sent to that one, that one time, I had the customers, like, the, the servers were way behind, way overworked that day. And I've, half of them had some sort of physical disability that was not being properly accommodated. And, I had I had customers like bust, busting the tables for the servers because I was told not to, and I was threatened with termination all, by a manager who wasn't even my own manager, wow, okay. just because I was do trying to do my job. Yeah, and that's like a very good point, especially with like the in other restaurants you the servers have a very specific set task of what they're supposed to do, and there's other people who are doing those tasks. And we also <clears throat> making two ninety two an hour, you know the base pays two thirteen. I make two ninety two. We do all kinds of things. Not only do we wash the dishes from the the customers that we serve and clean the tables, we also have to cook the we also have to clean the cook stuff as well. When they're done with a pot of grits and it's empty, they throw it in the dish pit. It's our responsibility to wash all that. When they make grits, we got to wash in pots. When they make chili, we got to wash in pots. Mm -hmm. Why am I making two dollars an hour and you making seventeen to twenty, and you can't bust the sud on your own dishes? Mm -hmm. yes. Now we're gonna go and talk about the low wages and our demand for a livable wage and fair and consistent scheduling, uh, because the federal minimum wage for any worker is already not a livable wage, and adding insult to injury. The tipped minimum wage is only two thirteen an hour at the federal level, and even if you're making a little more as a server, that is still nowhere near a livable wage to try to live our lives, pay our expenses, pay for all the things that we need to do. So I want to kind of start this part of the conversation out just speaking on uh, the struggles that we face as workers with our everyday life and those expenses. Um, it's definitely kind of hard for me because um, I can't afford my medication. Um, so far as being a diabetic, um, dealing with arthritis and sciatica, on top of neuropathy. So um, I have medications that I take daily that I need, and the copay is still high. I can barely afford it. Even you know with having Waffle House insurance, they they take it out weekly, which was like almost eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. So. Meal deduction coming out, you paying for insurance that you can still be able to afford on top of necessities, on top of rent, on top of just trying to live and make it and still struggling. It's horrible. One of the things is uh, the difference between when I was a cook and when I was a server is when I was a cook, I was able, I had just started working at Waffle House after getting COVID and I started back again after getting it again. Both times I had long COVID symptoms and my heart rate was sometimes 150, 160 on shift. And when I'm sick in the house, it was just walking from my kitchen to the couch. So I needed a way to track my health metrics. When I was a server, I could never have afforded anything to make sure that I was staying healthy, that I wasn't having any issues. And I, But when I was a cook, I was able to buy a Fitbit that had all the health metrics that I needed to track to make sure I was healthy and I was okay and fit to work that day. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. <clears throat> you know, I've been a server for 29 years for Waffle House. And, you know, 10 years ago, it was a place to work. The money was there. Everything was great. And then it almost seems like the flip of a coin, they get more greedy. You know, simple things like going to the grocery store and buying a decent meal Forget it. I can't do it. I'm only making two ninety two an hour. They're taking every bit of my checks. And ninety percent of the time I go to bed hungry. I can't even afford to buy groceries for myself. My son will never go hungry. I will sell everything I have to feed my son. Me, I'm a grown woman. I can go to bed hungry. That's sad that I have come to that conclusion that it's okay for them to starve me to death. 
It's not right. Enough is enough. We deserve more than $2 an hour. We deserve to be able to take care of our families. We deserve to have enough money to handle what we need to handle. Last year, they repossessed my car because I couldn't make my car payments because I wasn't getting a paycheck. This is what Waffle House has done to a lot of us. And it's sad that we have to sit here and cry out for help from Waffle House. A billion dollar company, workers making millions of dollars. And this is the result of giving time, lost time, from families working every holiday. This is the result. And it's sad that this is the result. Waffle House, what are you gonna do? And what are y'all gonna change? Like a light bulb on somebody in the corporate office, it should just go off and say, we need to help these workers. Or when are y'all gonna help us, Waffle House? Yeah, and it, it really seems that Upon hearing this, some people might say, well, if you need the more money, just work more. And it's like, I can, I'm willing to bet many of us have worked a lot of overtime on top of that too, right? Oh, yeah. Like we're not just working the 32 hours a week. We're probably pushing 40, 50, even 60 hours a week. So it's like, what more work can, can we do? Does anyone have any experiences working overtime? Oh yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, this past year, I worked a double Christmas day. That's the only time I work a double knowing I wasn't going to get a paycheck. And that's really sad because we make time and a half. We only get time and a half for three holidays. Mm -hmm. Even though they're blackout holidays and we have to work, it is mandatory or you right. don't have a job. It's Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. That's, mm -hmm. it. that's it. You get Actually, you only get paid time and a half for Christmas and New Year's now. They changed it. Last year, we got paid for all three. This year, I only got paid for two. Mm -hmm. So you do the math. Time and a half at two ninety two isn't much, right? But it still should have it still should have boosted my check. I should have still gotten a paycheck. Zero dollars. You know, I worked hard. Uh, that was seventeen hours. I about killed myself and I got no paycheck. I've most been most of my time as a cook while working at Waffle House. So like, you know, I've worked um, I've, I've mostly worked at like, you know, with cook pay, um, and I was hired on as a manager, but I, mean, I, I was a server for about, um, uh, three to four months. And like during that time, while while being a server, like it, it uh, uh, like if you don't make good tips and you're re uh, you're really struggling, like, I mean, like two ninety two an hour is not anything that like people can actually like sustain their lives on or like, you know, I pay, I, I pay their like rent on or pay their car payment on things that uh, on things that we need to, this, uh, to survive as like, you know, just uh, j j just from day to day life. But not only that, like I've had like managers like tell me before that like um, they would uh, like, they would call me in as a cook and then like they'll just say, oh, we're going to put you on a server as a, instead. And like, you know, when we uh, when you're like thinking that you're gonna get cook pay, you gotta like think about like, okay, can I afford gas? I, I, I mm -hmm. wanna like spend like my little my last little bit of money to gas in my car, to, like go ahead and make that cook pay and then like they throw you on there to be a server and like and then if you don't make good tips that day, it's just like it's just uh, uh, it just messes you up. And <laughs> what I, I think what I, really, like, what I really wanna say is just that like, you know, um if you're if you work at Waffle House for any number of years, they're like you know you've done you've been on both you've been on both jobs at some point sooner or later. Like you know, in a server, like you have to like you I, I, it's, it's not only just about like you know you fill out a ticket and then like you know other other people do something else. Like you have to have customer service skills. You have to have uh, uh, uh you have to have money management skills. You have to have you have to be able to clean, and it's just it's really like I'm really like you're doing like four or five jobs in one. And doing all that for two ninety two is just not right for me and myself. I mean, like I'm in the million dollar club. I worked, I worked at Waffle House for so long that, um, like I've been a, and been a cook for so long that I've cooked a million dollars for the company. Um, and like, you know, that's uh, uh, that's money that I'll never see. Like, 
What did you they know? give you for becoming a million dollar club? Uh, you st you're supposed to get a shirt. I never got the shirt. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to get like uh, this really nice black shirt that says million dollar club on the back. Uh, but I never actually got that shirt. And I don't think I'm ever going to get that shirt. <laughs> a shirt. And, yeah. And you made Waffle House a million dollars and all you get is a shirt? Yeah. What's wow. Up? Like, they don't even give you the, they don't even give you a bonus or anything like that if you're if you're in the million dollar club like um sound mm. like a five hundred thousand dollar bonus to me exactly put some respect on your check yeah mm. yeah that's what, we, uh, that's what they need to do but um like but like you know you, you you sacrifice like you know things that you can't get back hours of your life for uh, for the company to give them a million dollars and like you know wow. I might uh, I be, well, being a being, being a cook like you know like I start off at um I start off like seventeen an hour but uh, well not just being being a rock star you get seventeen an hour but like that's not uh, 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 but that's still like money that you're struggling with uh, I actually also had a question you're in the million dollar club. Uh, how many times have you gotten grease burns? How many and how many times have you been? How long have you been standing all day? Oh shoot! I'm that's... like that's not hurt my foot. <laughs> like like how like like I like, stand on um, like I don't st like I stand like I like, I've been in front of the grill like I've stood in front of the grill for the entire shift before like you know like seven hours like seven hours on my feet all day one time I mean like well not one time multiple times before, um where like you know you st like shoot I have worked third shift actually and like. I've been the I've been the sole cook um, on third shift on Saturday night, and, and I'm pretty sure you guys can know. Uh, everybody knows what that's like. Like, you work on Saturday night mm -hmm. by yourself. Um, that's cooking like about three thousand yep. um, dollars just by yourself, and that's that's not a, a I, that's not I, that's something that does you don't get a break when you do that. Like you know you mm -hmm. either get, you either get, you get that food out or you're like or you got like a whole line of, of mad people behind you. Yeah, and yeah. you're by yourself. Sometimes on first shift, there's four cooks, and yeah. a cook can maybe sneak away for a second, mm -hmm. and someone can cover their post. But on the night shift, it's just you. Mm -hmm. and you have to delegate the meat, the waffles, yeah. and the food, and make sure nothing is burnt. Yeah, yeah. and like, and it's just like you know, um, when you're when you're doing it by yourself, um, kind of like we saying like you, you have four cooks on first shift. Um, sometimes on first shift, you know, like you do like two or three thousand dollars. Like so, so that's four cooks doing something that like you know on first shift whereas like a third shift you just it's just you mm -hmm. and that's just like in, I mean, that's what the craziness behind it is but like you know like like i worked i've been i worked at waffle house for seven years i'm a rock star cook like there's not like a job in the building that i don't know how to do and yet still like i don't have make enough money to survive like you know i still got like i, I still got like people like i get like i still got to take it like i still got like you know pay rents i still got to uh, make my car payments. I still got like you know, um, like I, 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 I'm in an actually in the process of moving, and like you know it's expensive, and like I'm, I'm really it's really difficult to you know do all this where like you know where you don't make where you don't make where you don't make enough money to like you know where your bank accounts in the negatives from one week to the next. And a lot of people don't um, understand. They just see oh well you get paid every week. They see the little cars where they'll start you out at these numbers but at the end of the day they don't start you out at these numbers mm -hmm. yes we get paid every week however we are still struggling you have people that are homeless mm -hmm. still working but you know you just can't make it mm -hmm. if you got insurance coming out your check you got the meal deduction coming out of your check mm -hmm. and then you have your life so you already got three strikes against you possibility you're not making those tips for that day or for the week that you may you may have budget your budget mm. and you don't meet that budget on that paycheck and you stuck and it's sad that they can't do more raise the pay mm. and what when i uh first joined the waffle house i was talking with the district manager that was in that in our store that day and he laid out on it on a napkin for me. He was like, "Here's what you're going to start at. You're going to start at fourteen fifty as a cook. You're going to get bumped up a couple dollars once mm -hmm. you finish your training, and then you're going to end like by the time you're a rock star, you're going to end up twenty two dollars. If you decide to take on a, a second shift supervisor, you're going to end up twenty three dollars." And when I started as a cook, 
I realized during my training, when I was supposed to be on 1450, I was only on 1250. Mm -hmm. I only ever saw 1450 when I was working the door core, and I was blocked from part of my job. So when I'm when, like in another store, I mentioned where I wasn't allowed to bust the tables. I was being blocked from doing part of my job. There were times where all I was doing was just standing there, kind of giving a look to the server to indicate like this table, I need this table now. And that's all I could do while the cook's back there, you know, maybe getting the grease burn, flipping eggs uh, in a, a way I never mastered and getting those hash browns out when they're perfect, getting the meats out when they're perfect. And I want to pick it back off of something Gerald said so far as um, when you're a, a, a rock star cook and you're a server, um, depending on how many days you work, it messes up your check as a cook. Mm -hmm. They'll bring you in, you know you finna cook for the day, and then, oh, I need you to serve, but they don't tell you the flip side, you know, that's gonna mess up your check. Mm -hmm. And all the more reason that, you know, we're demanding for $25 all across the board. Like, mm -hmm. we're demanding $25 on our checks. Like, the pay needs to be raised. We're not making it. Um, Waffle House, we deserve that. Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about like all the side work we have to do. You know, we only make two ninety two an hour, and you know we greet you when you come in the door. We set you up. We get you your drinks. You know, we get your order. We call your order and we pick your food up. Mm -hmm. You know, we deliver you your food. Well, you, that's not all that we do. You know, those cheese eggs that you eat, we got to scrub them cheese egg pans. We've got mm -hmm. all this extra side work to do. Mm -hmm. And we're making two ninety two an hour. It's ridiculous. It should not be that way. We should be making more and I'm not gonna stop until we get twenty five an hour. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. And we're here to stand up and let it be known that we're not gonna take this anymore. So. Yeah, and it sounds like no matter what the position is, whether you're a grill op, whether you're a server, whether you're on door core or anything, mm -hmm. you're doing a lot of work, you know? And it's like yeah. people tend to ask, well, why 25 an hour? That's a lot of money to demand for this labor, but it's it's skilled labor. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of skills. Like Gerald, you said that earlier, there's a lot of task delegation you have to do. Yes. Um, do y'all agree with that? Like it takes a lot of skills to do oh, your job? it takes a lot of skills. It takes the fact that you've got to know how to do math. You've got to learn all the abbreviations for the mm -hmm. Waffle House. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn all the prices. You have to do a, a menu test every day where you have to write the abbreviations yeah. and write the prices. The prices mm -hmm. change every three to four months. Yeah. Patience. You know, you've got to learn to have patience with customers because some customers just, you know, they're a little different. There's right. some that come in that have no idea, have never been in a Waffle House before, right. you know. Mm -hmm. You've got to know how to pay attention to your condiments and everything on your table and make sure you keep them full via your sugars, your salt, your peppers, your napkins, your syrups, you know, you've got, and that's a lot on just one person. And mm -hmm. your caddy to make sure that it's set up like it's supposed to be in the Waffle House way, yeah. table yep. set up, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's definitely a lot. Yeah, and also you got also there's a lot of cleaning that goes into Waffle House. Like you guys in a dish pit, like you guys have to be in a dish pit all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Like every now and again, you got to pour like a little cap of bleach into the mud. But like and also like you know, um, every now and again a server will end up on the grill because of just how like uh, I, I, I just because of the nature of the store. Mm -hmm. Like you know, um, you got uh, like like most like, I feel like most servers nowadays have like at least spent like one day. I uh, spent like one day on the grill, like one mm -hmm. shift at least. And like it, it was, like so you have to throw cooking on top of all of that. Um, on the on the cook side of things, like you know you have to like uh, like you have to like break down your grill and. I ain't mean, cook. I ain't mean, cooking all of that. If a customer's getting rowdy, the if you're if you're uh, if you're to cook on on this on the shift by themselves, you're you're the quote unquote on duty like manager or what do you want right. to call it. Like everybody really has to like have some kind of skill with dealing with customers, and there's a lot to juggle inside the restaurant. Like you know, they want to like present these kind of jobs. It's like you know, like not having any kind of skills whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like this is like this is real work like you know this is like the, this is a I mean like I I personally believe that Waffle House people are the hardest working people I've met in my life like that I've, and I feel like everybody like everybody that's worked at Waffle House deserves I deserve the entire world because like 
things on uh, on the things that we have to deal with on a day to day basis is like stuff that like I feel like most on uh, uh, most people that have on uh, to have quote unquote skilled jobs have never had to deal with before like. Right. Of uh, like, how, like how often have you had like just a person that you've never met before in your entire life just walk, run up to you and start yelling in your face? Like that's stuff that we had to deal with on a daily. Uh, Waffle House knows that these are skilled jobs and knows that it's too much work because when they are on the weekend shifts, they hi they hire the door core mm -hmm. specifically to take the load of uh, trying to start busting these tables, trying keeping the line out the door organized making sure the floor is swept trash taken out on the floor that fall instead of falling on the server when it's that busy on three four thousand dollar days you've got the door core taking care of that yeah and 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 another thing um you know along with all the side work that we do not including you know just the dish pit but our fill-ups as well mm -hmm. we don't have the proper equipment to do some of the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to clean the bathrooms. There are bodily fluids that on yeah, third right. shift, you have people coming in there drunk. They're having, they're vomiting everywhere. They're having bowel movements in the middle of the bathroom floor. You know, they come in, they got a cut, they're bleeding everywhere. We mm -hmm. do not have the proper equipment and or gear right. to clean any of that, but we are made to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of jobs will May sometimes hire out or contract cleaning like services and they'll just come in and they'll clean and sanitize and they'll leave and a lot of other places would do that but they expect us to have that skill of clean cleaning is a skill and yeah. is like a very deep skill there's a lot of people who don't know how to clean that's okay but we're not you're not trained to clean you know like does anyone ever get cleaning training at waffle house no no it's just still to clean <laughs> yeah uh, and a lot of people don't know how to clean at home, but that's what you're told. Clean how you're supposed to clean at home. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if anything, I took the ability to clean grease from the Waffle House and mm -hmm. applied it to my home, not the other way around. Yeah. Um, like, I did not know before working Waffle House how to clean grease. I was never actually trained. I just picked it up from my coworkers knowing what to do after years of working there and being able to say, all right, this is how you do it. Taking time out of their tipped out of their tips, in one case putting their their customers behind just to make sure I knew how to do my job and I wasn't getting behind with the customers I was helping out with. All right, so it's very clear that it takes a lot of skill and we're deserving to make 25 an hour living wage off of the work that you all provide. And a lot of people like to say that's not true, especially people online. So what we're gonna do now as an activity is read a bunch of comments that are often uh, on the USSW social medias whenever they see these. So I'm gonna pass these cards out to y'all. There you go. We can just go down the table and y'all can go ahead and read your comment and give any thoughts that you have on uh, what the commenter is saying. Joe says, people are asking for 25 an hour to make some pancakes and waffles. I'm a plumber. Uh, I'm a plumber's apprentice and I only make 20 LMFAO. Um, in my opinion, like, you know, you should make more than 20 an hour to be a plumber also. I mean, if you uh i so like you know you're coming at us for um uh you come you coming at us about like oh we don't deserve 25 an hour like you deserve more than 25 an hour i i uh, uh like you're dealing with like you know people's like um bodily fluids and whatnot every single day um you should be like uh, you should be working with your people uh, you'd be working with the people that you work with and organizing with them to start demanding more from the people that um uh, on that employ you like don't uh, 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 I I everybody like like everybody that works for a living deserves more like deserves more especially as like you know things get more expensive like you know inflation keeps going up um like uh, just living just, just living in this economy right now is uh is really hard um don't um uh the, um uh don't, like, you shouldn't like uh, like we don't want to like divide people up into like you know saying like oh it's ridiculous for people to um uh ask for 25 an hour but like you know everybody deserves more 
I've got, I worked at Waffle House during Harvey and Irma, which were hurricanes, and we're, we were walking in water, serving a no-power menu in the dark to 60-plus people. It was scary. You know, I worked through, I believe it was Hurricane Irma when it come through. Um, it was very scary. Uh, at home, we were without power for like three days. Um, the weather was horrible, and I was still made to travel from my house to work, which is 12, 15 minutes from my house. You know, the weather was not permitting. I should not have been out there driving, but I had to. So, you know, I understand where this person's coming from, ocean trash. Um, you know, this affects you not only physically. You're walking through water. Mm -hmm. You're scared because this horrible storm is going on around you, and you don't know what's going to happen, you know. And you're expecting us to be in the building and giving you <clears throat> and these customers 110%. You should be down here with us given 110%. Mm -hmm. But you're sitting at home at your house. You know, we want to be at home with our families, too. We shouldn't have to work through disasters like this. It's not fair and it's not right. If you think we need to be there, I believe you need to be there, too. Mm. On, on top of all of it, you know, think of how this affects workers. Okay, there was no hazard pay. There was no overtime pay. There was no nothing extra. I still made two ninety two an hour to work myself and run around like a chick on my head cut off to feed people because, you know, at this point, they were as bad off as I was at home. They were out eating because they didn't have any power either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were trying to make it best for them. But at the same time, Waffle House didn't make it best for us either. All right. So, open your own billion dollar company then. George was 767 said to me. So, everyone should not have to open up their own business or if you don't want to open up your own business. Um, I'm barely making enough to get myself something to eat or for the night or get myself through the next week. So how am I going to open up a billion dollar company? Everybody doesn't have the means um, to open up their billion dollar company. And if I decide that's not what I want to do, then that's my choice. That's my option. And with that being said, if I did decide that, then Waffle House need to give us what we need. Don't you know what I'm saying? They need to pay okay. us 25. And, you know, I might be able to open up a billion dollar company, or you okay. might. Okay. Or we might go in together and just, you know, shut them down. That's right. And <laughs> people have to understand just because we're servers and cooks at Waffle House, our work counts. All work is dignified. Not just because you in a suit every day. No, we're not in suits, but we're in a uniform mm. and we count. Everything we do is. It comes from the depths of the inside. You got to be a certain type of bill. You're a strong person dealing with customers and violence and for these little $2.13. So just know that we can, but we won't have the means to because Waffle House is not paying enough. Yeah. And you are, y'all are the billion dollar company. Period. So if you started your own, it would be you and your workers making that. It wouldn't be yours. Y'all are the billion dollar company. Y'all are Waffle House. I deserve to afford my rent, utilities, and food. How is that controversial? Yeah. I can't get higher income skills if I can't support myself while learning them. Uh, have you ever considered you're being underpaid too? Um, and this comment actually does tie back into every other comment here. If you're justifying that you're being underpaid because you've only got right. the, you've only making $20 an hour as a plumber's apprentice, wait, maybe you're being underpaid too. And if you're trying to start a billion dollar company, learn all these skills mm -hmm. that you need to start a billion dollar company, you got, get a startup going, that costs money. Money that you're not being paid, mm. money that is instead being sent to your food, to That's your fine. electricity, to your car payments, everything. And like the Waffle House has made itself so that the workers and the workers have made it so that they're supporting each other along the way in a lot of these stores. 
and that's the only reason they've survived this long mm -hmm. is you've got each other's back it's almost like you're already unionizing in your own front and but making solidarity among yourselves got getting each other's backs mm -hmm. and that that's how you get what you need and deserve all right so after all of this talking about the experiences that Waffle House workers go through, we are going to play a little game of Waffle House worker bingo. Yeah. So I'm going yeah. to pass out these cards to y'all, and y'all are just going to give a big old X over um, any of these that apply to y'all in the workplace. Oh, I'm and winning this. I'm here. giving y'all right now. <laughs> Thank you. These are all things that... Um, typically Waffle House workers experience, and we just want to see if these all apply to y'all as well, whether it's working a 17-hour shift, um, no paid time off, uh, late-night violence, anything like that. So if you see that it applies to you, just go ahead and leave an X. Oh, we close for Mark. I'll, I'll open that. Oh, I got this. <laughs> Hold up your cards and let's see how much of this applies, which it kind of looks like it's almost everything for everybody. And if anyone wants to talk about any specific experiences with some of these. Um, I'm gonna go for the broken equipment. Um, while working at Waffle House last summer, um, Columbia, South Carolina is hot. Um, it's hot South Cake and Lecky, they say. It was in the hundreds while we were working at Waffle House and maybe had AC maybe once a week. Um, it would be a quick fix and then the AC would go back out. Like my coworkers were getting nauseous, um, fainting at the dish pit, running outside, trying to, you know, catch a breath and it's even more hot running outside. Definitely people with allergies, um, getting overheated. Like the AC was not fixed until the end of the summer and it still wasn't consistent then and uh that was read in one that was like one of the demands um when i went on strike also that was one of our demands um safety uh in the workplace everything properly working and it was bad and it wasn't fixed until the end of the summer like i said I think I'm going to talk about um, 17 hour shift. Is, it, is anyone else here work 17 hour shift? I definitely work 17 hour shifts. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> they are not fun. They're exhausting. Yeah. Right. Your feet hurt, your back hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back during when I worked, um, but back when I, I, like, you know, I talked about her Irma already, but like, I didn't bring it up that, like, you know, I worked 17 hours that day. Like, um, I wasn't even scheduled to work that day. Uh, I came in. At 3 p.m. to the um uh, 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 to a completely blowed out store um on, like on second shift um and like you know I worked until I didn't I didn't leave until I think 9 a.m. the next on on, on on first shift the next day. Did you get your uh, break? Your 30 minute? No. Break? <laughs> no, I didn't no. get no. no I didn't get no so break. What time oh, did you go shit. in? Uh, I went. I went at three p.m. Three p.m. Yeah. So like, I worked. Uh, I worked all second. Um, worked. Uh, I worked all third, and then I st uh, and I stayed over a little bit on the first shift. Oh wow. So like, um, and it like, like that was honestly one of the hardest shifts I worked in my life because like it was just nothing but like con uh, nonstop uh, uh, nonstop um, cooking for like uh, for like about ten hours straight. And then after that, like, um, I was expected to, like, clean the store afterwards. So, like, you know, and I was the only cook on third shift that night. So, like, uh, I had to cook. Uh, I, I had to clean. I, like, you know, it wasn't nonstop. It was always just stuck with me because, like, that's, like, one of the, like, it's, like, how did we, how do I get, like, to, like, how do we get to this point that, like, you know, oh, I'm stuck here by myself having to deal with all of this stuff in the store and I'm still getting paid as like little as as little as I currently am. So I got a question. So did you cook like just in house orders, or you had to do to goes as well? No, no, no. And did you get to eat? No, I don't know. I had no time. 
Like, you know, like, you know, or, or like they, they want, like, they want you to get, it's not even just that they want you to get, um, um, they want you to get the food cooked. Like, well, when management comes in the next day, like, yes, I'm pretty sure you know that, like, they expect the door to be mm -hmm. clean. Um, every single ship, they expect, their, like, everything to be clean. And, you know, if you don't, like, if you don't meet that, then what are you going, like, to get, like, they get mad about it. Right. So, uh, yeah, I went into... I went into work that day at 3 p.m. and I didn't get out until 9 a.m. the next day, a little bit into first shift. As a worker who is uh, fighting to organize and unionize your workplace, what are you demanding from Waffle House and what change would you like to see? Okay, so first things first, we're demanding 25 an hour for both cooks and servers um, because that amount of pay would be transformative for um, people within their lives and like, you know, it'll give them enough money to actually like, you know, prepare themselves for their lives and um uh, and like and actually like you know live a, a decent stable life next we're asking for 24 7 security on this sh on all on all shifts because you know what i what because waffle house has like you know nurtured this culture of violence at the stores like um it's not it's not safe to work there at waffle house for only for any of the workers so they need to have 24 i mean, they need to have 24 7 security for only for everybody that works at the store um, and lastly, we need to have, we need to end mandatory meal deductions. Like there, it, like there is like no reason if you're not going to eat the food for them to take the money out your paycheck. That's right. Like a lot of people around at this round table said that they, they, they can't eat a lot of the food at Waffle House. Some right. of us can't eat meat. Some of us can't eat pork. You know, it's not fair to assume just because I work at this job that I'm going to eat the food that you guys provide. I mean, like, okay. well, if you just simply just don't want to eat Waffle House that day. I mean, like, that's not, I, 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 that's, like, a lot of people get sick and tired of the food after a little while. Yeah. Um, and so what, like, and what I personally want to see anything that I see to change is that, like, I want Waffle House workers to begin to start standing up and start, like, demanding more from corporate office that, um, you know, they on they have like the jobs they currently have because of us. Um, they, um, uh, they like they are like live a cushy job where they can just simply like you know do stuff on computers all day. Um, and um, but we're the get um, but we're the ones that are down in the trenches every single day. Um, uh, making I uh, I I'm, I'm making what what is Waffle House? What is the like the public image of what Waffle House is possible? Right. So we need, like, like, so we need to like start standing up and saying, no, we're not going to take it anymore. We need to, um, uh, we need to like organize and unionize, fight back. All right. Yep. Agreed. And also, we had like a, and we also had a petition that we, um, that uh, that we got thirteen thousand signatures for. And that petition, um, we delivered it when we tried to deliver it to corporate office. And instead of meeting us and like trying to talk to us about like what I like, what needs to change, uh, corporate locked us out of uh, locked us out of the building and they took all of our petitions and threw them away. And yeah, like, right. yeah. and that just that just kind of just shows like the attitude that corporate office has towards uh, us Waffle House workers is that like you know they don't really respect the things that like when we don't when we do things that like is not like within their purview. They don't. Uh, they just ignore. They just act like it doesn't even really happen. Right. But like you know, we're well, we're standing up. We're trying to. Uh, we're uh, we're fighting back, and like that's what I think. Like all all Waffle House workers need to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm personally still working at Waffle House because um, Waffle House people are the hardest working people I've met in my life. They um, uh, they deserve the world and. And I want to see that change. Like, I want to see the things that, like, you know, with Waffle House people are experiencing, like, you know, where things get a little bit better for them. I mean, Waffle House, it, it wasn't my first job. It was kind of like my first, like, like kind of like professional job, I guess you could say. Like, you know, it was my first job working for a company. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of people like to say, say things like, oh, I'll just work this job and, um, like, it's just, and just move on to something else after where, like, for me personally, you know, you work in some place for long enough, it becomes part of your your DNA. Like, you know, um, it's not just that, like, you know, I, I work at Waffle House, I'm a Waffle House worker. I, like, you know, it's where, like, it's, it's where, like, I cut my teeth, like, learning how to cook. And it's, and it's like a part of me now. Right. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give that up just because, you know, corporate office is mad at me. 
Well, I mean, That's right. You know. <laughs> Very true. Mm -hmm. On the topic of why we're doing all this organizing in the first place, because we're not making enough money just to survive and live, Gerald actually has to leave us now to go work his second job because right. he has to work two jobs in order just to get by. Yeah. So Gerald. we're all going to say goodbye to Gerald. See you later, Gerald. Bye, Gerald. Bye, all. Bye, all. Take care of yourself, man. Yeah. Stop be safe, man. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for being here, Gerald. Safe uh -huh. travels. Yeah. All right. See, look be careful. To be soon. safe. I'll yes. plan on it. All right. All right, so we've discussed all of the ways that Waffle House has failed to protect and provide for their workers. And a lot of people might say things like, oh, just go find another job. But there is also comes a pride and dignity to the job that we work. And if we allow ourselves to be disrespected in one place, then the disrespect can continue anywhere else. Okay. So y'all want to talk a little bit about why you still choose to stay at Waffle House and fight for better work conditions rather than leaving? Um, with me, um, I did not choose to stay. Um, however, I will tell people, do not job hop. What you need to do is get together with your court workers, organize, unionize, and strike. We all have to come to a collective whole to make this happen. It was hard, you know, but we're going to get these wins like the most amazing experience I had to sit down with the um at the round table and talk with Secretary of Labor Julie Sue, um, who is in support of unions and in support of USSW. So definitely stay um at your workplace, um, at Waffle House. Um you do not have to take disrespect from management. It's hard, but stick it out and, you know, pass on the word. Um, educate yourself about unions. Unions are wanted and needed more across the South as well as um, our different chapters where we're located. So, the one the one thing I have to say is, going to do another job doesn't always help. I uh, live with my mother, and she works a good government job. Mm -hmm. And fifteen dollars an hour, and between the two of us, I was working as a cook, door core, server. None of those positions plus the, the her government job could pay for our food and our bills. Wow. And we ha had to rely on other family. We currently live with my grandparents, to, and they are the ones helping pay for our food, our shelter, our electricity bill, our water bill. Nothing we don't. That's sad. We, I can't pay it. She can't pay it. Mm -hmm. That is horrible. You mentioned not every job is like going to be for you, you know, like going to another job could be a different environment that doesn't work out. Is there a specific uh, environment that Waffle House created that you like you wish you had in other jobs? And if so, like, what are those things? Yes, um, I used to go to the Waffle House a lot when I was a kid. Uh, there was one time I went in the store that I used to work at. And they were out of waffles when we went in there, which it, my grandfather just kind of pointed at the menu was like, but it's the Waffle House. Like, how do y'all have waffles? And the staff at that time, they scraped the last of the waffle batter out of the containers they had not yet thrown in the dish pit because they hadn't had, had nothing more. And they scraped me together a waffle. And that's the kind of environment, the kind of coworkers that you – want to work with in the Waffle House. And that's most of the co people and workers in the Waffle House are kind, respectful people. And they're on the workforce and they're not getting paid enough to live. And that's what creates the nice environment. I go to uh, the other restaurants in our area and I don't want to work there. They don't have that nice environment. And I feed off of the energy that's around me. That's right. If the energy is all anger and disappointment and negativity, that's what I broadcast. That's what I I amplify it and I rebroadcast it right back out. The wow. Waffle House, there's hat like where we. It's a good environment with a bad employer on these points. Right. Yeah, because it sounds like the workers again. The workers make up you know, the whole company and they make up everything that the company is built upon and the workers work together and there's that. But collectively, the workers are feeling the effects of the employer of the company, of corporate, 
not giving what they need in order to do their job or to live their lives. Right. I absolutely love my customers. I've been with a company long enough and I've been at two different locations. Every one of my customers passed five, six, seven, eight Waffle Houses to come to see me. You know, I love them. They're my, they're my extended family, just like the people I work with. It's, it's a wonderful thing. We laugh, we cut up, we have a blast all day long. But in the same breath, at the same time, I'm having a blast at work, putting money in my pocket and knowing there's a chance I'm not going to have enough money to buy groceries to eat dinner. I weighed 375 pounds. Waffle House has starved me down to 183 pounds because I can't afford food. Yeah, it's sad. And it's like, how can you push, how can you push a family environment, which is, you know, that's a big part of the marketing for the corporation. They push this family environment and families do come in for like that experience that, again, the workers like you provide to these families that come in. But then how can a family let their family starve, you know, and not make enough when they have the means to make enough or to give enough? Yes. How does it feel knowing that you're not choosing to run away from this and you're choosing to stand up against a multi-billion dollar corporation like Waffle House? Well, as of Monday, this past Monday on the, um, what was it, the 24th or 25th, um, we had given my boss uh, a demand letter demanding 25 an hour, 24 seven security, you know, um, equal scheduling, you know, um, meal deductions, the mandatory meal deductions to stop. And uh, we gave him two weeks. On Monday morning at 10 o'clock, we read the strike letter and informed him that we were going on strike for four days. Me and two of my other coworkers finished, turned around, walked out and left him by himself. That is the most empowering feeling I have ever felt in my life. I felt like I could pick the world up with one finger. It was amazing to know that I could stand up and cause that much effect just for standing up for myself and my coworkers and everybody else that that works for Waffle House. It was awesome. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And it's like, as as this corporation has all of this money, suddenly one person or a couple of people deciding to do this can cost them that much money. Oh, yeah. Which begs the question, what if every employee did it? Has Ooh. anyone else anyone else strike before or been on uh, strike? I went on strike um July seventh last year in South Carolina, um at my un at, well at my unit sitting four twenty eight, Garden Spirit Road. Um it was absolutely amazing put some respect on my check Mm. um i loved it um i was light as a feather and right now i still do not have any desire to go back to a waffle house and that breaks my heart because two of the young ladies went on straight with me that i trained and they hadn't been at Waffle House that long. And for them to be there that short amount of time and to organize our store for us to go on strike, I walked out. They read their demand letter the weekend before, and it was just something I wish I could have done years ago. But now is the time. I will say stay in your workplace. Organize your workplace communicate with your workers, educate yourselves, educate each other. Unions are here. Union of Southern Services workers are here. Atlanta, North Carolina, South Carolina, reach out to us. You do not have to take what you are going through. You can be respected. You are a human being. You have lives to feed. You have yourself to feed. So, you know, this is Shay letting you know that you're supported. We got y'all back. So stay in your workplace, organize your workplace, and strike. Yeah, and that's beautiful. Does anyone else have anything else they want to say uh, to anyone who's watching this video mm-hmm. who who did not know about this, who may be working another job that is facing similar struggles and knowing that maybe they need some words of encouragement to help organize their workplace as well? Well, the original way I ended up joining was uh, I was standing at work one day and was talking to a couple of my coworkers and 
my now organizer was in there and she heard me talking how I hadn't gotten a paycheck for like six weeks. So she come down and she says, you know, I'm with the Union of Southern Service Workers and, you know, you don't have to take that. That's what we're here for. You know, we stand up and we fight together. And I was kind of leaning to, yeah, no, it'll be okay. So I gave her my name and phone number and told her to get back in touch with me. About six months had passed. She comes back in. I looked at her and she says, how you feeling about it now? I said, I'm, I'm tired. I'm ready. I said, it's been coming up on a year. I haven't gotten a paycheck. I filled out the card and I signed it and I joined the union. And I have never in my life felt that I belonged anywhere else mm -hmm. other than right here where I'm at, the Union of Southern Service Workers. We are here to help you. We are here to protect you. And if ain't nobody got your back, we got your back all day, every day, no matter what. If you think you're going to get fired, if you're scared, it's okay to be scared. I was too. I'm not scared anymore because they're just like you and me. They put their shoes, their socks, and their pants on one leg at a time. I mean, piggybacking off of why you joined the union, the, the, the thing that pushed me was not the disrespect from management or the low wages. It was the fact that the supervisor on the second shift I worked decided to raise a um, concern and escalate with me in front of customers. And the one, like, that's the one thing the yeah. entire time I was there, everything I did was not for Waffle House, was for the customers. And I was not put on the schedule properly, which was an error in the management. I was not given a ticket book, so even as a server, I could not take tables. I could not right. get tips off of that. And so I had no way to make the money. And the second shift supervisor refused to call the at, the, at the time, district manager, because our unit manager was on vacation. And the unit manager was the one who told me to be there. And I, I, I was told that she didn't get a call from the district manager telling her she would, should, not, should not have done that. But it cost me money. It cost, it made, I know it made some of those customers uncomfortable. And it, that was the event that pushed me into the union. So it, it's not just our backs that the union's got. It's the customers making sure That's right. they're making sure management doesn't affect them if management's going to neglect us in some way. That's right. So after everything we've talked about today, mm -hmm. what are your hopes of a takeaway of viewers watching this as far as your experience working at Waffle House? I hope they get a better understanding to realize that we deserve more than $2.13 an hour. And we don't just do unskilled labor. You have to have a lot of talent and a lot of skills to do this job. I know people who have worked 15 years in another waitressing job come in there and can't last a day. It's a whole other world. And I really hope that the customers and the people who see this video will begin to understand that if you don't stand up and speak for yourself, a closed mouth never gets fed. Mm. I will say I hope that people, not just restaurant workers, but all workers. If you work in a re warehouse, if you work in retail, if you do home health aid, it doesn't matter your job title. If you're being disrespected, if you are dealing with low wages, if you're dealing with anything, I urge people to communicate, come together as a whole. If you don't want to join a union, support a union. Support other workers that are going through. I know that there are high schoolers coming out. I feel like middle school kids um, taking through, going through the transitioning of high school should be taught about unions. Give them that education. Give them the opportunity to, to know that a union is good. Organize your unit. Go on strike, do what you got to do, but we got to do it together. We can't do it individually, y'all. Uh, the hopes that I have for the people wa that watch us is the main thing I've always pushed is an informed decision. What Anything you do in life, you can be manipulated by being just not knowing a simple fact.
Right. So knowing some of the things that are going on, it makes helps you make an informed decision on whether or not you join a union, support a union, stand with a union, or keep away from a union. Waffle House isn't all bad, but the bad parts need to change. All right. Mm -hmm. You said that. Yeah. Well, definitely, yeah. definitely. And is there anything that y'all would like to say to Waffle House corporate who will be watching this? Y'all need to understand the only reason why you are a multi-billion dollar company is because of us. Because we get up every morning, we put our shoes on, we put our uniform on, and we go in there and do our job to take care of our families. Guess what? We can't take care of our families because you don't make it necessary. It is extremely necessary. We have to change. We are fighting and we are going to get 25 an hour. We are going to have 24 seven security and we are going to stop that mandatory meal deduction. If corporate's watching this and we know you are, I know I wasn't with the Waffle House long and I'm, I got an understanding of it's not always that y'all are just not understanding because you refuse to. Make sure you're shaping policies with worker input and that you never lose sight of being a worker yourself. You wouldn't have that money without us and we wouldn't make you money if we didn't want to. Corporate, you have workers that have worked for you 20 plus years like myself and Miss Cindy. So. I challenge you to put yourselves in our position, which I know you have. You've been in our position before. Y'all started from the bottom. Y'all wasn't just handed this company. Y'all worked to get to where y'all are. So give us the opportunity to get to where y'all are, if not higher. Because the money that we're making, we're not going to be able to even get nowhere. It's not even a middle class. We're just a lower class. I don't want to be conservative like you, but give us our conservative pay, $25 an hour, baby. Um, and I've not worked with this company for the past eight years. And just because I have gone away and I figured out working my own world of music and being a creative doesn't mean that my value that I've provided as a worker in the service industry was any less valid or any other worker in the service industry is any less valid. In fact, a lot of my skills that I gained as a service worker, I carry on as a professional musician in the work that I do every single day. They are, they are all skilled workers and all of those skills are applicable to everything that we do in society. There are only two classes, the working class and the owning class. And the working class, most of the people who provide the labor that the companies benefit from, we are the ones that are on the floor doing the work. And we will continue to work together to make sure that we are making our fair share of the work that we are providing of all of the profits. Okay, y'all. So I got a quick idea. What y'all think about doing a chat real quick? Yeah. I'm in. You yes, in? Yeah. Y'all yeah. in? Okay. All right. This Waffle House of Wine, pay us 25. Oh, this Waffle House of Mine, pay us 25. This Waffle House of Mine, pay us 25, 25, 25, 25. Oh, yeah. This wonderful house of mine, pay us 25. This wonderful house of mine, pay us 25. This wonderful house of mine, pay us 25, 25, 25, 25. Oh, yeah. Go on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was cool. Yeah.